Okay, we wanted to show you guys the new harness that we got for Charity Case. This is a harness that was put together by Jeremy Gray out of uh, Gray's Performance and Off-Road out in Colorado. Uh, he does a really good job We're using uh, mil-spec wiring and doing the, uh, doing the ends and label every, everything. It makes it really nice for the install. Um, then we also have the ECM extended to where we can put the ECM in the cab so it's out of the weather. And then we've got these bulkhead connectors that go in the firewall makes it easier if we pull the engine we can just disconnect this pull the whole engine out leaving the harness on the engine uh, so big shout out to Jerry at uh, Gray's performance he does a bang up job on these things um, we're going to show you just some of these ends how he labels everything and makes it uh, their OE connectors it makes everything really nice and neat big shout out to them if you guys need anything on harnesses they also have the 150 psi map sensors that we can rescale uh, your O3 to 09 Cummins to a 150 psi sensor so it actually reads that like on your CTS monitor etc. Uh, that stuff that uh, Jeremy Gray offers at Gray's Performance. So big shout out to them for everything they've done here on this harness. I just wanted to give you guys a new project that we have kind of getting started here today. Uh, this is customer Matt Gardenia's truck. It has a Predator Series D and J in it. It's got the set of I forget exactly what the size of the turbos are uh, but it's got two stages of nitrous and all that fun stuff. This is a fourth gen and we are putting a removable roll bar in it. So, kind of give a little overview how we start. Basically just floor mats, all that kind of stuff get out of the way. This one's gonna be a little bit interesting just for the fact of we have some fun things to go around. The fourth gens, you can kind of see, uh, have these cubby holes that go down into the ground and it's kind of right where the main hoop needs to go. So that's gonna be fun. Um, you can kind of see also it has a sub in the one side where the back down brace will go. Other than that, it's kind of going to be an interesting one to say the least, but it'll be fun. So I'll keep you guys updated on this. We're going to get holes attempted to get drilled and all that fun stuff today. So. Trying to get the roll gate or the roll bar, the removable roll bar and done or Words are pretty hard. <laughs> Trying to get the removable roll bar done, at least the main hoop done, so then we can work on the back braces and the front door bars. Still waiting on a couple small pieces for it, but it's kind of wanted to give you guys a little, you know, we get a lot of questions about just some of the equipment that we use here and just random stuff like that. Everything that we do here is man or manual bent. Uh, we don't have any software. We don't have anything crazy like that. Uh, Lynn, Lynn's eye for his manual bending skills are just phenomenal. So. He plays a big part in a lot of that. Um, I'd end up doing a lot of the finish welding, tacking, uh, a lot of the bracing, that kind of stuff. But this is the machine I use every day. Uh, this is an OTC. Uh, I forget the exact model number. I'll kind of show you guys. Yeah, it's a DTX 2200. Um, this is a pretty badass machine. Um, this is actually Rick's uh, personal machine that he got through his sponsorship with OTC which is a great company their machines are this is my by far my favorite machine I've ever welded with uh, we also have a Lincoln a precision TIG and we have the new Millermatic 255 that are is our MIG machine uh, we got this at PRI this year and it's been really nice doing a lot of the frame stuff that we do um, this is what we do for a lot of the big turbo covers that kind of stuff this is our water bandsaw and this is kind of just what we do our metal rackets kind of messy right now but we have I don't know where we have two notchers we have a Bali and we have an older one too uh, that this is pretty much you know where we notch everything uh, like I said everything is more or less all um, well it is all just hand measured and notched and bent so it's works out pretty good though it's a lot of time time consuming because a lot of stuff we do is not really you know we don't do any production stuff uh, besides our four link kits, it's about the only production stuff we do. We use all of Furyk's cups. Um, this is his Jazzy tin that we use. And then I have a big assortment of stuff and other things that we use. Um, a lot of his eight cups, these are a lot of the stuff that we use. It's really nice for doing cages and stuff. This is some of our bigger stuff for doing the stainless. We use this 12 glass cups. It's just, it's really nice stuff to, you know, be able to see what you're welding and getting in tight spots. It helps a bunch. Uh, we have the main hoop done, the shoulder bar, the front door bars, all the nubs, that's what I like to call them. Um, anyway, it's kind of lean back right now. It's got a ratchet, this is kind of just a little trick that we use if, you know, our 
manual bending is a touch off, but this gets it true and square and perfect. So this is actually uh, all done. We're doing, we're gonna try to start doing a bunch of stuff in Docal rather than Chromoly. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper. It has no mill scale on it. As you can see, it looks a little bit, you know, the finish is a little bit cleaner. Um, so it's a little bit easier to work with and I like it. Uh, well, is really nice. It's pretty nice. So we have some of the outriggers done and other random stuff. Um, these are the swing outs that we use, if you guys have seen them. Pretty nice piece from Rhodes. Um, these are some of the, oh, there's some of the outriggers. Uh, these are actually, I don't know if you saw in the video before, that where it has the box that goes through the floor, this is actually gonna go around it. So the box will actually sit right here and then you know the main hoop will come down in here and bolt to here. Uh, these are some of the other little things that we do, just kind of giving you guys a little bit of an in-depth. Uh, these are what gets welded into the end of the main hoop and the actually it bolts through the bottom. So just some nice little pieces. These are all kind of finished up and ready to weld in when I pull it out and get it all finished welded main hoop wise and then we'll start on the back braces. Basically we like to get the main hoop situated before we work on back braces and door bars. Especially the door bars. Door bars we do last and front outriggers because they are a nice way to say it a pain uh, because they have such little tolerance and movement because obviously as you weld stuff moves so to get them to fit where you don't have to mess with them get a you know where they're not tight or anything it just it takes a little bit longer to do those and we like to have everything fit tight in before we do those so we do those last but we'll get to those here probably hopefully tomorrow uh, we'll get the main hoop outriggers done tomorrow it's kind of end of the day wrapping up I don't think um, I know I had talked a little bit before about how we were going to do the outriggers for the main hoop with this being a fourth gen we had a bit of an issue of seeing how we're going to get around the box so as you can see I'm trying to lay under the truck uh, this is where the box sits and then so basically nothing's tacked this is kind of just a mock-up for right now but um so we end up coming straight out and then cut obviously a 45 and a 45 piece and this is a bolt-in roll bar so this is where we get a lot of questions about what if this gets a cert or anything like that but this does not since this actually uses a 7 8 bolt the bolts to the main hoop as you can kind of see came around the box and then back up front and then missed everything and have nice clearance here so nothing's gonna rattle nothing dumb like that um so we'll end up actually boxing this off to make it just give it a nice finish and then this is obviously for your big um it's an allen head bolt so we use you know, a big socket to get in here so this is to met or this matches the diameter of the inch and three quarter pipe that we use and then obviously the ends welded in uh the bottom of the pipe and that's what bolts to it so we'll get this finished up and i'll kind of get, give you guys more of an update on when we get it done and then the back obviously you can kind of see the hole through the light or the light through the hole uh and then we'll just come straight out here and this will actually have a little bit of a back bend in it uh when we come down through so we're not close to this so we're not close to the cab mount uh, so we can weld, finish weld it. We TIG weld. I TIG weld everything uh, to the frame. You know, you can MIG weld everything and it's a more structural weld, but we kind of, it's a, TIG weld's a nice thing to, you know, have. It shows uh, quality and just, yeah, kind of gives us, gives the customer a nice touch and something that's nice to look at underneath and underneath the truck and in the truck. 